Okay, there's this word called amphipathic that looks a little bit scary, but when we're talking about amphipathic, we have to be thinking about phospholipids. So here's what amphipathic means. So when you take a look at a phospholipid molecule, which is a kind of modified uh, triglyceride. So a triglyceride is a type of fat, basically, which is made up of two parts. There's the glycerol molecule, and there's actually uh, three, there's supposed to be three fatty acids attached. So phospholipid, if you're familiar with a phospholipid, then you already know that a phospholipid is something that's part of a plasma membrane. So why is a phospholipid amphipathic? So amphipathic just means it has both water-loving and water-hating parts. So you can see from this generalized diagram of a phospholipid, it has a head, which is hydrophilic. That's the hydrophilic head. And then it also has something called a hydrophobic tail. And you should know from words like audiophile and claustrophobe that hydrophilic means to like water and hydrophobic means to dislike water. So you can see this part, the head, one of the reasons it likes water is because it has this phosphate group in it and the phosphate group has some charges which makes it polar and therefore polar materials are attracted to water. And for the part that doesn't like water or the hydrophobic tails, you end up with a lot of these non-polar uh, carbon chains. So when you see something that looks like this with all these jaggedy lines, all the corners, all these corners are actually carbons and all the rest of the spaces are filled up with hydrogens. Except for here where there's a double bond which means there's a few less hydrogens that are located over here. So why is this significant? Because phospholipids have heads that like water and tails that don't like water, they naturally form, if you just throw a big pile of thousands of phospholipids into water, they will naturally form into bilayers like this, where the heads will be facing the water and the tails try to bunch together and uh, feel safe. It's, it's not because they want to feel safe, it's because the tails don't like water, they're non-polar. Non-polar things tend to bind with non-polar things, while polar things like these heads tend to bind with the water that's around them. So here's a zoomed out diagram when you see an actual full plasma membrane. You can see all the tails are facing the inside, the heads are around the outside of the cell and also the inside of the cell which tend to be filled with water. That's basically it. So here's another diagram. It's like I said, if you dumped a pile of phospholipids into water, they would actually form into these little vesicles. They don't necessarily have to have anything inside, so it doesn't have to be a living cell, but phospholipids will still join together to form these natural uh, little vesicles. So it gives some evidence for how early life might have started as well too. So once again, the word amphipathic, not too special. I've never used it in regular dinner conversation, but amphipathic means having both hydrophilic, water-loving, and water-hating properties helps to contribute to the stable plasma membrane structure. This would be a perfect question to ask. You know, it could be like a six to eight point question. Explain how the amphipathic properties of phospholipids helps to contribute to the stability of the plasma membrane. And then finally, I've already mentioned this, the phospholipid bilayer is formed with heads facing the outside and tails facing inwards. So once again, that's all about the amphipathic properties of phospholipids and how that helps to contribute to the stability of the plasma membrane.